Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. I'm going to continue here um, with this next article. Four Palestinians killed as strikes escalate on Israel-Gaza border. It says 80 rockets reportedly fired against Israel amid claims on impending ceasefire. The largest joint U.S. military operation ever, a drill simulating missile attacks across several fronts, took on an unusual significance today as Israeli soldiers on the Gaza frontier struggled with the very real incoming missiles amid a new round of escalation on the border. So this kind of sounds, um, you know, that term's thrown around a lot, false flag, but if uh, they knew this was happening, and uh, we know that Hamas is a creation of Mossad, uh, then this is a, it's a good chance that this is what's happening right now. Because somebody's lying here. It says Palestinian officials claim that a ceasefire has been negotiated by Egypt that would bring the exchange of fire to a halt as of midnight, kind of like what's going on with Syria. Hamas has reportedly promised to deploy troops along the border to prevent smaller factions from violating the ceasefire, and i.e. Uh, shoot off some rockets, right? Israeli officials deny the report, however, claiming no deal was in place. Hungarian demonstrators burn Israeli flag in Budapest. Members of the Hungary's Javik Ultra Nationalist Party have burned an Israeli flag in front of a major synagogue in the capital of Budapest, Budapest calling on the government to cut diplomatic and economic ties with the Tel Aviv regime. Tuesday marked the country's 56th anniversary of the anti-communist revolution in 1956. So you go from anti-communist to anti-Zionist. They denounced the cooperation between the Israeli regime and Hungary, saying the agreement between Hungary and Israel should be canceled. Meanwhile, Israeli ambassador to Budapest suddenly appeared on the television program later in the day condemning the anti-Israeli demonstrations in Budapest. So it's, it's nice to be able to control and, and own a lot of the media, like shutting down press TV in Europe and stuff like that, owning Hollywood. Um, it says that here the foreign affairs a spokesman for the party said that Israel's treatment of Palestinians amounted to a Nazi system. And Wayne Matson is asking, was there a price tag retaliation on Finland? So go down and says to everyone's surprise, tiny Luxembourg, which has never been before a member of the UN Security Council, edged out Finland to be elected to a two-year seat on the UN body. There is strong suspicion in Helsinki that Israel exacted the price tag revenge and lobbyists against Finnish seat on the Security Council because of past statements by members of the Finnish government against the Israeli treatment of Palestinians and the fact that the Estelle, the latest ship that tried to run the Israeli blockade of Gaza, is registered in Turku, Finland, flying the Finnish flag. These price tag attacks have been uh, behind Jewish attacks on mosques, Roman Catholic Orthodox Protestant churches and shrines in Jerusalem. Jews carry out such attacks as price tag for pressure brought by Palestinians and Christians against Israeli expansionist policies. And, uh, you know, this just happened to happen, right? Just a few days after Finland lost his Security Council bid, a man wielding a knife tried to assassinate Prime Minister in Tarku. It has been well documented that Israel and the U.S. have put tremendous pressure on small countries in Africa and the Caribbean to vote against Palestinian or Palestine in the General Assembly and not recognize any independence of other places, including South Ossetia. So when you go down here, it actually says that the Finnish Green League has also come under criticism from Israel and the global Jewish lobby for its pro-Palestinian activism. The Greens have also equated Israel's policy towards the Palestinians to the Nazi treatment of the Jews and other minorities. So Wayne Matson says, for Israel, Luxembourg must have been the lesser of two eagles, saying that um, the Democrats considered Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to be ignorant and maintains that Israel turned Gaza into a prison and has called for the freeze of EU's relationships with Israel over um, basically Palestine and their treatment. So lastly, in reality, political leaders everywhere are growing tired of Israel and its policies. Israel can only ensure political allies abroad by dumping loads of cash from wealthy Jews. Individuals like gambling tycoon Sheldon Adelson and media mogul Haim Sabin into political coffers of its rented politicians. One of them is actually Obama. Obama moves to make the war on terror permanent, so complete with a newly coined creepy Orwellian euphemism, disposition matrix. The regime institutionalizes the most extreme powers a government can claim. So, yeah, but it goes on and says that uh, these liberty erosions virtually always become permanent. Like I mentioned before, the Rush song, these changes are permanent. They don't go away. But uh, it's interesting because they said, what, 
that it was going to be these drone strikes and targeted kills, killings by drones would be extended by another decade. Just talked about that yesterday. It says the timeline suggests that the U.S. has reached only the midpoint of what was once known as the global war on terrorism. Well, the war on terror will never end because they'll always create terrorism. They are the biggest uh, um, cultivators of terrorism, right? But where do you think the other half of that global war on terror will be? Could it be in countries that, like Europe or the United States that might have civil unrest or uh, demonstrations, protests might start to get violent as people start to get desperate as there's no jobs, right? So they, if you can't do anything about it, uh, you're going to start to get desperate. And they know that, and that's why they're getting everything ready. And I'll go back to that article in a minute. Top Obama advisor says, Alaki's 16-year-old son should have had more responsible father if he wanted us not to kill him. So Robert Gibbs, the former White House press secretary, said if the U.S. citizen uh, did not want to be killed, he should have had a far more responsible father. And there's the picture of him. He was uh, actually a U.S. citizen, killed in a separate drone strike in Yemen weeks after his father's assassination. Goes on, it says that Gibbs dodged, dodged any further questioning on the issue, but in his answer defended the killing of the six-year-old American boy, not by arguing that the kid was a threat or that killing him was an accident, but by saying that his late father irresponsibly joined al-Qaeda terrorists, which is headed up uh, by the same uh, folks that uh, work for Obama or Obama works for. Depends on how you look at it as far as intelligence, right? Obama is actually kind of midway in the intelligence as far as what he knows. And you got all those people above him that actually run the show for the industries, the military industrial complex. Anti-drone protesters arrested in New York. So 16 people who blocked three gates at the New York National Guard Hancock Field this morning were taken into custody by authorities charged with trespassing and disorderly conduct. So the protesters believe that such operations are wrong and use the protests and arrests as a way to educate the public about the issue. They don't know what's happening, they said, in Pakistan and Afghanistan in their name. That's right, it's happening in your name with your tax dollars droning uh, foreigners that really you have no beef with. So, And you're paying for it, and these people are, are going to hate you. So, you know, the whole thing about the whole crap about the Muslim film and all the Muslims being mad about the Zionist-backed release, Innocence of Muslim film, criticizing Prophet Muhammad. It wasn't just about that. A lot of people are pissed off at Americans uh, for the drone strikes and, and meddling in their affairs. So it says here, officers arrested 11 protesters at the main gate, frisking them and putting them in black plastic handcuffs before putting them on the bus, i.e. getting abducted. It's the same ones as before, Daly said. They don't realize how much manpower they tie up from around the country. Despite growing criticism in the U.S. over the use of deadly drone strikes, Obama and Mitt Romney are in tremendous amount of agreement over the issue. Remember this number, the number of high-level militants killed as a percentage of total casualties is extremely low. Actually, it's 2% of deaths. So of all the deaths and, and stuff like that, targeted killings of drone strikes, only 2% are actually uh, people that they would want to kill. But Leon Panetta described the use of these drone strikes in Pakistan and Yemen as absolutely essential to our ability to fend, defend Americans. So who's in control, right? Who's, a, who's in control of this? If you can't protest it and stop it, uh, if you can't vote it and stop it, uh, the only thing you can do is be left to resort to violence, right? Or just do nothing or not even talk about it. So I guess the best you can do is talk about it, because otherwise, if you lead to violence, you're talking about hijacking the drones, um, like kind of like chemtrails, shooting the planes out of the sky. And, uh, you know, they want you to do that. They want you to do that. That's why I have all the infrastructure set up. And that's why they're going to bring it home, as they say. And uh, some good news, I guess. Clinton may not step down after all. So the CFR member will uh, head up um, uh, or continue her mission to dominate the world and kill off any sovereign uh, entities, sovereign nations that are left. And then we have Obama Romney, both slave to Zionist foreign policy, says analyst. And I know most of us already knew that, but it says here Obama and Mitt Romney are both in servitude to the Zionist regime of Israel. So it says the foreign policy of both parties is actually a Zionist policy. It says both of them, Obama and Romney, support the policy of the Zionist regime of Israel. Whatever the regime says is what goes as far as foreign policy. So it says here they try to couch their approach in some different language, but their approach is basically the same. 
One may call for war, the other may call for sanctions, but they both call for servitude to the Zionist regime of Israel. So I know that, you know, I covered this before about how the average American voter has the attention span and memory of a puppy, of an eight-week-year-old puppy. But I think Colin Powell was there with George Bush uh, lying to us about weapons of mass destruction that capped off this uh, uh, um, domino effect of these, of these states like Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, now they're trying for Syria. All planned, right? And did, you know, whatever, they cook up lies, whatever they have to do to do this. I think he was part of that who was under the Bush regime, now is endorsing support for Barack Obama. It's interesting, uh, the post-Soviet communist state of Russia would vote for Obama as well. And Ben Affleck, Republicans had a chance, Obama isn't perfect, so, and this is the same guy that just uh, uh, basically backed the TSA about uh, fondling and uh, encroaching on you and, and touching your private parts and stuff like that, saying it's in the name of security to keep you safe. So he's all for that. Um, and a lot of people in Hollywood as well. Um, I just saw a video of Ed Norton today. Um, I guess he is a big Obama supporter and stuff like that. And everybody thinks that he just, they say the same thing, which is what, well, you know, it's not on his watch and you got to give him time and stuff like that. See, Obama isn't perfect and so, uh, you know, he, I don't know what you would call him. He's, uh, he's not really a neocon, uh, he's, but uh, he carries out neocon policies. Uh, it's hard to really say, right? But he is a globalist, um, and he is a corporatist, and he has a lot of people fooled as to wh who he represents. But the celebrities in Hollywood, um, which is owned by Zionists, uh, tend to, what, push a lot of their agendas, uh, the Pentagon push a lot of their agendas through Hollywood. So I don't know if these people are, are actually thinking for themselves, but uh, either way, Mitt Romney agreed with Barack Obama so much last night, it was shocking. So just like the debates, how about how Obama was asleep in the first one, and then the last one, I watched the last um, five or ten minutes of the debate, that's it. And Obama's eyes were bugged out, and he just looked really aggressive. And, uh, you know, so this was all just kind of like the NFL, right, with the refs and stuff like that, completely rigged, completely staged, and it's completely obvious. So that's why I said people who don't see this, how could you support Obama? He's supporting drone strikes, killing people, farmers in Pakistan who have no beef with. So how could you how could you keep your head in the sand or your head up your ass and not see that, not recognize that the economy is not getting better? How could you not look at the 37 st statistics I just covered yesterday about how Americans... Uh, desperate Americans uh, are, are getting killed here as far as the economic um, situation goes. It's not getting better, like like you're seeing in the media. Um, Colin Powell is saying that. I think even Ed Norton is saying that. Um, but they're noticing that there is no difference. It's all a show. And they're trying to make it into, you know, are, are Mormons feminists too? They're making it into a big feminist thing. The other trend I noticed in the uh, in the media was how they were talking about politically split relationships, right? So people, uh, it's a corrosive thing to talk about politics, right? And that's what it's meant to do, like religion. So people don't actually talk about something, come to terms with something. Uh, they just get really emotional, right? They shut down. They're emotionally connected to these individuals. That's what television was, was really interesting with the Kennedys. That's when it started with Kennedy and all that, dude. Um, it was the television that helped them win and striking that emotional cord, right? So, uh, and they know this, the powers that be know this. That's why they have to have uh, tall, slim guys like Obama and stuff like that. They have a nice tan, they don't remind people of the pasty old white guy. But you can see they're psychopaths, right? They're sociopaths, they will lie and they will cater to whatever, you, whatever uh, the slaves wanna hear. Your inner, inner psychopath could make you a big success. So it says you can learn from the nutcases, right? They're huge egos and resistance to self-blame, i.e. they don't take responsibility. Stefan Molyneux, an anarchist, did a video called Hunting the Psychopath, equating politicians with psychopaths. And uh, presidential campaigns want to know what you're reading online. Why? Because they want to be able to lie to you better. All this, sorry Tea Party, U.S. remains a modern nation, so the right wing is a big loser. Saying there was no ideological conversion two years ago. That's because they neutered the movement, calling them extremists and racists, equating them as terrorists by DHS standards. See? Racist graffiti scrawled on storefront anti-Obama sign. And also they silenced journalists. They revolted against Obama-Romney censorship, NBC's Chuck Todd rips White House press censorship, and the U.S. government's war on journalism. That's right. 
This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.